the message out to try to inspire Christians to try to help here in Israel. And to this see, is one tangible way of to doing To see that. real people living real lives, not what's on the mm -hmm. news or what isn't on the news right. or someone's opinion of what the news right. is. This is real children, real life. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. This is my ship over from Maria Tageshem. In the winter, we pray for rain. Right. And this is, this is the famous At least three adults on hand mm -hmm. taking care of us yes. other babies. Oh, nice. This is it. <laughs> I need to say nothing else. So right now there's a, a warning that no children are allowed to be outside anyway. Oh. Um, I don't know if that's across the whole country, but that would be in an area like this. If you look around, there are some uh, villages in yes. the neighborhood mm -hmm. that we do have to be a bit more aware careful. Of. <laughs> So they go to kindergarten at four? They go to kindergarten, yes. Okay. So every, every morning, every class has a time for prayers. The guy who puts on his talit in the full corner garment, and they take up every, every Friday afternoon across every daycare center we have. There's always Shabbat, and mom can Shabbat's mommy and Shabbat daddy, and they light the candles, and they put it on the it's, it's gorgeous. The emergency shelter is a very special place. We are the only shelter in Israel for babies. You know, people used to think that the baby doesn't feel, a baby doesn't know. A baby from the first minute and knows. The baby shelter here at Amuna Beit El Zraki is for our youngest uh, children, our youngest children at risk. Part of what we can do is provide these babies with a stable, warm, loving environment that is crucial to the development of any baby. The story is not the baby that's coming. It's to see them growing up over here, starting their first step, their first words. To say the first time, Abba, but we have really the honor to take care of this baby, to be there for him, and to make sure that his future will be really, really different than the first moments in his life. המעון הזה הוא מעון גדול, אחד המעונות הגדולים בירושלים, ואנחנו, המוטו של המעון, להעשיר אותם ולתת להם הרגלים בריאים וטובים לילדים. לא רק לילדים, וגם להורים. כל הצוות נותנים ומשקיעים בילדים כמו בידיים שלי. אני יושבת איתם בישיבות צוות, ואנחנו דנים על כל ילד וילד. אנחנו בודקים מה אפשר לעשות, מה לתת, כל מה שרק אפשר. צריך להשקיע היום, היום לתת להם. גם ייתן להורים, למשפחה, ייתן להם שילדים יגדלו בצורה התקינה והטובה. They believe in us and care about us. It really is the only place that an observant young woman can study fine art, graphic design, or theater studies, and still remain true to her religious beliefs. It really is unique. When I get in here, I start to believe in myself. My confidence is building. The first time that I get good grades, I was crying. I run to my mom and I tell her, Mom, I get a hundred. She's not only coming somewhere to study, she's coming somewhere that will be her family for the next four years. When I get married, it was a lot of worries. 
when I came to the Napoli in the Mechlara, they say to me that I need to, to worry about my study and they worry about the money. There are good uh, people in here. The girls that graduate from Emuna are wanted all over the country. The future paper currency of Israel is going to be designed by one of the graduates of our college. It's really something to have a degree from Emuna. We are standing in the Ma'ayan Rivka Golden Age restaurant. Any lonely elderly person can come eat here. An old man said, Mora Ada, I have what to eat. I don't have with whom to eat. All our lives, we think of those who have no food. We never thought about people who may have food at home, but who have only four walls to eat with. This place is a godsend for many, many people. Every day people bless us and say, if it wasn't for you, we don't know what we would do with ourselves. כשהייתי בת ארבע, ההורים שלי התגרשו. אימא שלי הייתה אישה מוכה, הייתי יותר מסתובבת ברחובות מאשר מבלה בבית. ובאיזשהו שלב, כשהעובדת סוציאלית שאלה אותי מה אני רוצה לעשות, ביקשתי לעבור לפנימיה. אני זוכרת את היום הראשון שאביבה הגיעה לאחוזת שרה. יצאה מיד לחצר והתחילה לשחק, אני זוכרת אותה בתור ילדה. ואני, ברגע שפתחו את השער, הרגשתי שאני מתחילה לנשום. אני רוצה לספר על הלילה הראשון שלי בפנימייה, כי ראו שיש כאן ילדה בעייתית שלא יודעים מה לעשות איתה. איתה באה אליי, ובמקום לתת לי שתי סטירות, כמו, כמו שהייתי רגילה לקבל, היא... אני מאוד מתרגשת. פשוט ישבה איתי. כל הלילה, ו... ודיברה איתי, וזה היה פעם ראשונה בחיים שלי, שלא העמישו אותי, ולא צעקו עליי, ולא העליבו אותי. שם התחלתי את החיים שלי. אני לא הייתי יכולה לעמוד כאן היום, לשבת ולדבר איתך, ולהתקדם בחיים שלי, ולהפוך למי שאני היום, אם לא היה לי את זה. גיליתי שאני שווה. שיש לי מה לתת. אמונה בעצם זה כל החיים שלי. לא האמינה שהיא תצליח ללמוד לקרוא, והיא סיימה בגרות מלאה. המשיכה ללמוד אחר כך, הקימה בית. מנסה ללמד את הילדים שלי, והכל בזכותם. אני מאחלת לילדים שלי את מה שלא לא קיבלתי כל החיים, שאני אוכל לתת להם. About the year 2000, yeah. I was an unemployed attorney, and my husband, Alan, volunteered me to chair the Zionism Committee in our kids', high school, our kids uh, school. And we decided to start an intercession school trip for the families to Israel. And one of my friends knew that Amuna had a travel department, so we decided to partner with Amuna and have Amuna run the trip, whereby Amuna would provide the, all the touring, the airfare, everything from soup to nuts, and we would provide the people, and all, they, all Amuna asked is that 
we make a stop at one of the children's homes. Easy enough. Okay. So we put together the trip in 2000 and we went along with my daughter and to say, well, let me, let me not jump forward. We decided that since we had been there so many times, we were going to leave in the middle and go to London. And there was another family that was running the trip with me. And there was only like 30 people on the trip, so we said they could handle it. The night before we were supposed to leave was one of those Bashert moments. My daughter came down with a raging ear infection. And we went to the emergency room, to one of these uh, urgent care centers, and they said, you can't fly. She can't get on the plane. You have to stay. So had we left, we would have missed the children's home on that trip. So we now had to stay. So we ended up going to the Muna children's home in Netanya called Beit al -Azraki. And it was truly a life-changing experience. We got to see the work that Amuna does, and we were blown away. We came back, and I went into the Amuna office, and I said, tell me what you need me to do. What else can I do? Can I run more trips? We need to bring more people to see this. So by the next year, I was co-chairing the mission department. I left my law career in the dust, never went back, and from 2001, 2011, I co-chaired the missions department with Melanie Olbaum. I don't know if you started the missions department. And my mission, no pun intended, was to bring as many people to Israel to see what it is that we do. And then I became national president. So that's my personal path to the MUNA. Because once I learned what it is, that was all I wanted to do. So it actually was started before the Holocaust began. If you recall, in then Palestine, the British had put on um, a severe limit on immigration. So there was not, that, not enough Jewish children coming into Palestine, whatever there were. Emuna was helping, although Emuna was then called Hapoel Mizrahi. So Emuna did play a part, you know, whatever we could back then, but that wasn't why it was created. The organization started in 1935, around the time of the Holocaust. And it was created to take care of children. That was the original mission of Emuna. And it was originally called Amuna Women, and it was started by women to take care of children who needed to be taken care of in Israel. And obviously Israel was a very different place back in the 30s. All of the work that Amuna does is in Israel. It has grown to be one of the oldest and largest social service and educational organizations in Israel. We now have 250 projects throughout the country, including Judea and Samaria, which for me was something important because it's an area that needs to be taken care of as well. We've been in Hebron since the beginning, and we have 140 daycare centers, so the mothers and fathers can go to work knowing their children are taken care of. Emergency child babies centers to take care of infants who have to be rescued from emergency situations. Just last week, they found a, a toddler by itself in a park, and they brought it to our emergency center in Netanya, so the baby was safe. It's crazy stories that we hear. My in-laws were in, in Israel, and they were at, it happens to be at Beit al Azraki in Netanya, and there was a baby found in a garbage can and they, it was brought to Beit al-Azraki. So, you know, it's 24-7 that this center operates. So we have the daycare centers, then we have what we call multi-purpose daycare centers, which is a step between 
the daycare centers and the children's homes where we work with the families to try and keep the babies, the children at home. Doesn't always work, but we try. It operates from 7 in the morning till 7 p.m. Sometimes it's the only hot meal that these children get during the day because the parents are really not capable of taking care of them. We try and teach the parents how to take care of their kids. Then we have the children's home, which take care in the five homes, about 1,200 children at the moment for abused, neglected, and abandoned children. These kids never go home again. Once they're taken by social services or police, they live there, they go out to school, they come home, they're taken care of by counselors who are doing their Shirut Lumi. And it's an amazing, warm place. They get food, shelter, and sometimes love for the first time in their lives. And they get psychological counseling and tutoring to try and help them reach their full potential, whatever that is for the child. There's five of them all over the country. And each one is a unique and amazing, amazing place. We have crisis counseling centers, thir 13 of them all over the country. And each one serves families, individuals, whatever the need is in the different situations. The one in Stay Road, as you can imagine, last summer was operating 24 hours a day. They, they couldn't even keep up with the demand. We have a restaurant. They call it Golden Age for senior citizens. It was created by a, a woman who used to run a children's home. And she saw the need for her friends who were Holocaust survivors, who had nobody to eat with. They needed companionship. Looks like a restaurant. They pay whatever they can. It's manned by, by volunteers. And they come for a hot meal and companionship. I took a leadership mission there, and we were there on a Thursday, and every man that came in brought her, the woman who runs it, a flower for Shabbat. Oh my gosh. We were all sobbing, just watching that. And they all sit there and get companionship. We take care of the entire circle of life, from infants to seniors. That's the social service aspect. And we have an educational component. We have four high schools for girls. One of them is a Torah and arts high school. Amazing artwork comes out of that. And we have a college in Jerusalem where it's the, created as a religious alternative to B'Tzalel. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm looking behind you. There's a paper cut that was created by one of the graduates that we typically give out we have a girl named Noah Atias, who is a world-renowned paper cut artist. All the girls graduate with a Bachelor of Education, and they, many of them go on to become teachers in religious high schools all over the country, but they all graduate with a degree in education. There's also a Mechina program for girls who couldn't graduate high school, and we give them a second chance there with lots and lots of tutoring and counseling. I would say almost every single one of them manages to graduate and go on to secondary education. The high school for Torah and Art, when it was created in the 60s, it was the neighborhood that it's in in Jerusalem was a very posh neighborhood. And it was a very elite school. It was very hard to get into. And now it's not. And the Ministry of Education insists that we take some locals from the surrounding neighborhood. So we had to create more of a remedial curriculum for them to pass because they're not up to par like they used to be. So it's a little bit, it's, it's much more of a challenge. And in fact, there are so many poorer students that there's a kiosk in the lobby and everybody gets a lunch ticket every single student, and nobody knows who pays for that lunch ticket and who doesn't. Because there are so many kids that can't afford lunch that we have to subsidize the lunch 
for many of the students. And this way nobody knows. And in fact, when we had a meeting with the principal and she told us that they found out that in the winter, many of the students don't have blankets at home or coats. So they've had to send home many of these items for the girls because their families are so poor. There are elements, many elements of need in the school, but it wasn't created for that. It was created to be an art school or to have an art element in it. It's evolved because of the neighborhood it's in to be something else. The college is not. There are girls on scholarship, but it's a regular college and it is bursting at the scene. There's so much demand. There are over 500 girls studying, young women. There's even a nursery there. Because if you recall, in Israel, girls, they go to college post-army, so they're much older. And there's a, there's a nursery for the married women with children to leave their babies there, which is really, really very special for them to be able to do that. The new money, the new currency, the paper currency that's circulating in Israel, so far just the 50 shekel note was designed by a graduate of the Muna College. They had a national competition to award the design, and one of our graduates won. Her name is Asnat Eshel. The high schools and the college are for the Orthodox community. All of our facilities are run under the modern Orthodox flag, let's say. We do cater to the modern Orthodox. And, but a lot of the children that come into the children's homes or even, maybe even in the daycare centers, may not necessarily come from Orthodox homes, but they will be raised in the children's homes as under modern Orthodox. I was once at a Chuzatzara, which is our children's home in B'nai Brak. I was standing out front on the lawn talking to the director. And an older man, and a teenage girl walk up with a young boy and he's holding the young boy by the hand and he hands him over to the director and then he leaves. No words were exchanged and the director says to me, I'll be right back. And he walks this young boy inside to the, the building. Five minutes later he comes back and I said, what just happened? And he said that the young boy has a brother already living in the children's home. The, that was the grandfather. The grandfather had had a stroke. The young girl, who was older than this little boy, was helping him try to, they were trying to raise this young boy together. They had already given up on the other brother. They were trying together to raise this young boy, and he couldn't do it. How sad is that, that he had to, I'm going to cry, that he had to give up. That's one of the better stories, though, because there was no abuse. He just couldn't do it. Last summer, when the war broke out, um, we decided on a minute's notice to go in the middle of the war. So we partnered with... Um, one of the synagogues um, from Englewood with Rabbi Golden. Um, and we went literally in the middle of the war from Avas Torah. And we put together two buses in a matter of four days. We put together a mission and we left. And right in the middle of the war, we were there for a week. And Emuna has a children's home right near Ashkelon. And unfortunately, these, this children's home has 60 of the most disturbed children. They had the most difficult background. We don't even take visitors there, ever, because they just, they can't deal with visitors. They have enough problems to deal with without visitors as well. It's called Neve Landy. So we brought boxes and boxes of toys for them because through the entire war, and well before, they had been living in their bomb shelter. 
they could come out for maybe like a few minutes at a time and then they'd have to go back. So when we got there, we brought, <laughs> it was actually kind of funny because we had water guns. And when we took them out, we looked at each other, we were like, what were we thinking? <laughs> we were at water guns? But the kids didn't make that association. They just thought it was fun. We had, and it was boiling hot. So the water guns were actually very welcome. It was kind of funny. So they're shooting each other <laughs> with water. <laughs> and we had water fights and, and lots of lots and lots of toys. Way too many toys, in fact, for 60 kids. But it was very welcome respite for them to be outside for a few minutes. We, got, we had to get clearance from Homeland Security to be outside for so long. We have this counseling center that does all sorts of straight counseling, you know, one-on-one -on -one counseling, and a lot of alternative therapy, reflexology and massages, and they had to bring in counselors from all over the country to try and, literally, they were working 24-7 during the entire war, and they're probably still working 24-7 because it's all post-traumatic stress. It doesn't end just because the war is over. I'm still getting alerts. The rockets are falling still, or again, now I, I don't know what you want to call it. It doesn't end, it's not ending. I saw on my daily alert, Hamas has tunnels, again. They've confirmed that the tunnels are back. It's so scary for these people. And then we went into Steyrot. These poor people have no business, none. We tried to spend as much money as we could just to give these, these poor businesses money. You know, the pizza shop, the, we went into a makolet, you know, a little bodega type of place. The people who have apartments in Israel tried to do their like weekly shopping just to give this poor guy some, some business. They haven't seen shoppers in weeks. But the, you know, the, the counseling center that we have is crucial for the, the whole area. They come from all the surrounding you know, communities. And it's, it's vital for the area. You know, they already reinforced all the buildings there. You know, when you go to the police station in Stay Road and you see the collection of rockets that they have there, it's, it's crazy. It's just crazy living down there. I would like to tell you a story about a little girl named Tali who lives in Stay Road. And as you know, Stay Road was really um, bombarded last summer. Tali's six years old. And last summer, during the war, she was walking with her mother and a rocket fell not a hundred feet from where they were standing. And I know I can't even imagine what that's like. And now, a year later, she's still suffering. She, she did go to the Immuna Counseling Center. The whole family went to the Immuna Counseling Center. Thank goodness they weren't physically hurt, which is a miracle, really, a truly a miracle in and of itself but she's refused to go to school. She refuses to leave the house. She barely eats. She has sleeping disorders and they don't know what to do with her. And this is all a case of post-traumatic stress. And this is, this is a year later. And this is very typical of the residents of Steyrot and the whole surrounding area. And this is what the, this counseling center is dealing with. And there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases like this. And this little girl is six years old. Tali is just one of the thousands of children that Emuna takes care of in our, our vast network of social services throughout the country. The Bible commands us to take care of the widows, the orphans, and the poor. And at Emuna, that's our mission. The word imuna means faith, and with faith, miracles can happen.
and with your financial support. And Muna can continue to make thousands of miracles happen every day. When you give to Amuna, you're fulfilling two mitzvot. It's not only tzedakah, charity, but you're helping Yishuv Eretz Israel, the settlement of the land of Israel. I met a boy that was in seventh grade. He was part of a gang, and he came to one of our homes. And I just met him again at 17. He's standing there with his uniform on, talking about his future. And that's something that we've created, a future. I'm going to cry a little because I can see their faces. Welcome to Bethel Azraki. This is a home for 222 children. Actually, the youngest one is three and a half months old. We will be with him in the daycare center, in the kindergarten. We will take him to Kitale. We will take him to the best high school, to the army. He found a home, a real home. הייתי מגיעה לעבודת צרה, אני חושבת שהיום הייתי, קודם כל הייתי מגיעה ללימודים. צאת בחוץ, משוטטת ברחובות. זה בית שלי פה, זה הבית. We know that when a child is smiling, we can start to walk with him. When he smiles, he started to dream. And when he dreams, the sky is a limit. We work from the very young, from basically birth, Till senior citizens. A friend of Emuna Petah Tikva said to me, Ada, we have to do something that people who are very poor should get from us hot soup every day. They said, why only soup? They come here, someone says, Shalom Yehuda, Shalom Yosef, how are you today? To look at those people every day to see their shining eyes. That is our Sahar in this world. The Mechina program is for girls that didn't finish high school or finished high school but didn't finish their final exams. My name is Sami Friedman. My name is Racheli Friedman. Our father went to New York for a wedding and in the middle of that event, and they discovered he had a cancer. And a few months later, he passed away. We were left five children with their mother. This place gives us a second chance to do something with my life. They gave me to believe that I can really succeed. They believed in me, and because of that, I managed to believe in myself. We have 13 family crisis and counseling centers. Israel has told us what they need and we listen, and we set up programs wherever it's needed. We need to build a place like this, because it was not in the 4th grade, until now, it was a place that gave you and said, what are your problems? Thank you, shalom. Go to Jerusalem, here we don't have a place to deal with you. בגלל שזה קריית ארבע זה מקום קצה, המקרים מאוד מאוד קשים. זה מקום שהיו חייבים, אבל לא הצליחו להקים אותו עד שהגענו. בשנת תשס"א, כשהתחילה מלחמת אוסלו, אימהות לא רצו להשאיר את הילדים הקטנים עם הילדים היותר גדולים, ונוצר צורך ליצור מסגרת שתאפשר לאימא בלב שקט. We have a high school of drama, music, art, and Torah. There's no other high school like it. I love to sing, I love to hear it, I love to learn everything about it. I come very far every day. I come here every day because I really enjoy to study here. 
כשהמטרה, המטרה שאנחנו הצבנו לעצמנו בעצם זה לעזור לבנות לעצב את הזהות היהודית, הזהות האישית, הזהות היצירתית של כל אחת ואחת. Even if I'm teaching history or math or English, the question that they'll ask won't be regular questions because the girls thinking out of the box. והן יכולות ללכת לאן שהן רוצות, הכל פתוח. מאז שזוכרת את עצמי תמיד הייתי מציירת. I always like drawing. In the graphic designing program I could take all those stuff. The most unique thing here is you can be a religious girl and get a college education while still raising a family. They have a daycare center, so I could even go out for six or seven hours a day and know that my son at a month was being taken care of. אמונה גם נתנה לי מגורים פה, כאילו במעונות שאני גרה, אז גם מבחינת דיור הם עוזרים, גם מבחינת מלגות וכספי גם. שזה דברים ממש באמונה שאני מאוד מעריכה את מה שהם עושים. After four years here, they become, I would say, ambassadors of a good and Jewish art all over Israel. So we start here, but we feel that we change the atmosphere in Israel. Since the inception of the state of Israel, Amunah has been at the forefront, helping Israelis in need and ensuring that Israel remains an Achuz Olam, our everlasting possession. Michael Oren, the Israeli ambassador to the United States, said that the definition of Zionism is Jews taking responsibility for other Jews. I know if you come and see what we do, I won't have to have this conversation with you because on your own you'll want to give Emunah and give to the future of our people.